Hello everyone, welcome back to the Circle Game series. My name is John and I'm a software engineer here at Clockwork Labs. Today we're going to go over the last few streams where we worked on the Circle Game. For the first day we worked on randomizing colors for food and for players, then we finished up the day by working on camera zoom. Let's jump into it. Um, I believe we left off where we, you and I both showed up in a game and went around. But we gotta fix the camera um, to zoom out. Yeah. We gotta fix the speeds, and we've gotta fix um, the eating other players. Yes, we have to add that. Okay. It's actually looking like pretty legitimate now. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, food color. We wanted to add some food color in. Okay, cool. So have this working. Again, a nice little background would be helpful for moving, but this looks good. Would you say that the okay, so the like so what do you want to do first? Do you want to do the food color first? That one's easy. Yeah, let's do food color first. Okay, so um, just based off of how color works in Unity, um, we should define the thing. I guess maybe we could like define color as a type. First, we're here in Unity adding support for random food color. I'll create a random number generator, which we will use for selecting a color for the food from the color palette. One problem me and Tyler discussed was that it's important that each piece of food needs to be the same color for all players. So if there are two players in the game, a piece of food should not be blue for one player and green for another. To make sure that this is deterministic, I use the entity ID of the food component as the seed for the random number generator. Then we discussed whether the color palette should be defined in Unity or on the server. We decided to put it in Unity for now. First, I'll define a color palette and I'll misspell color palette. This will define all possible colors for the food. For now, we just end up adding red, green, and blue. Then after this, I'm going to use the random number generator to pick a color from the color palette by generating a random integer and using the module operator on the size of the color palette. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so we have colored food now. Only three colors, Very but it's already looking better. So after we're done with the random colors for the food, we're going to add random colors for the player as well. Here, we're going to do some refactoring because a lot of this code is exactly the same as it was for the food. I copied the code for selecting a random color and created a new function from it called get random color. I can then just call this function and pass in the entity ID as a parameter. This will give me a deterministic color for any given entity, regardless if it's a food or a player. Now we're going to go inside of the player controller and basically do the same changes that we did inside of the food controller. Then to generate a random color for the player, we'll just pass in the entity ID of the player circle to generate the color. Okay. Um, so we've added this functionality now and it's deterministic as well. So my character is always green. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. So for this, for the camera zoom, basically we're going to spawn this guy. Our circle. Okay. We'll grab the local camera. Uh, camera. Uh, I guess this code should probably go in here. Yeah. Then on start, we'll just grab, maybe at the end here, we'll just say local camera is equal to camera dot main. Although the camera is so, um, it's uh, just updating, it's updating really quickly. Um, which makes sense because this value is really small. Um, could make it the do this and then like divide this by like 10 or something. So it's takes like a slightly longer for the camera to pan out. 
Uh, so it like gets progressively actually easier to eat a larger amount of food the larger you get, which makes sense. That's that's true. But they are pretty good. I'll just put them oh, in chat here. Okay. Okay, so we've got that. <laughs> we uh spent 15 minutes on that. <laughs> 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 okay, so we've got these the colors in here, so now um we can give this a we can give this a try here. No, but yeah, I accidentally published a test net. Okay, cool. Alright, so now we're in here, we're like a little red blob. Okay, there's lots of colors here. Okay, got a nice zoom out effect as um as the blob gets bigger. It's maybe a little bit quick on the transition. Um maybe yeah. we can like make it a little bit slower on the zoom out. So that was the end of day one. For day two, we're mainly gonna work on some interpolation fixes. I updated the algorithm here a bit and tried to fix the problem, but it did not really end up fixing the issue. That's just how it goes sometimes. Um, okay, we're just updating this logic quick um, for like making the movement not as stuttery. Um, so we're just doing that now. I like drew it out. Um, I kind of figured out what the, yeah, what we are missing here. So now it's obvious. So, okay, so we need a target position. We need a previous position. We also need a target position update receive time. Here, I'm just updating some of the interpolation logic. This basically just makes it so that the player's position is updated smoothly instead of just snapping to the new position every time we receive an update from the server. The previous logic had some issue in it where it was getting to the target position too quickly and it just looked like it was snapping. Like you saw, I drew out the problem in Excaldraw, and I think I mostly fixed it here, although I introduced another issue which we'll have to fix in another day. Then after this, I'm just going to start up SpaceMDB and publish the module to test to see if the interpolation is working properly. The main thing I was testing right now was actually the movement, and one thing I want to try is actually reducing... How's the movement feel? Pretty it's good, actually, actually feeling better. Good. I think the code that I just added is actually correct. Um, and I want to actually, oh, you know, good. one thing that's cool uh, that we can do here is actually I can play the game. And because our update speed is based on this value here, um, I can actually like go down to like 10 updates. Oh, cool. And we could do like five updates, right? And we can test different values to see because it's, it's, it's sending from the clients, right? This is the number of updates it's sending to the server. Yeah, we should be using like that direct value here, right? So we're saying, right, last updates per second, this thing is calculated, yes. So this this should be, it's got to play all the updates, okay. It's such a brilliant game, to be honest. It is. It's a very simple. It's a also a simple to understand game. Like you don't oh, even yeah. need to tell people instructions on how to play. You just put them in and then figure it out very easily. Oh, Brad's gonna eat me. <laughs> Let's give this a try. Let me publish this one more time here. Like, I would say this flow is very quick. Like, you're able to just, like, iterate on changes so much more quickly, you know? Okay, now the starting size is, like, pretty teeny tiny. And that was the end of day two. For day three, we're going to work on a repeating background and a welcome screen where users can input a username. Okay, cool. So we did get that to work. Well, clearly we have to, I guess, increase the scale in order to make the, okay, there we go, make the pattern better. Um, and then maybe what I'll do, okay, cool. So now we have a uh, repeating backgrounds. Now that the repeating background looks all good, I'm just going to center it so that as we scale up the world, the repeating background is always in the center of the playfield. 
Currently how we have this implemented is that the playfield has a visual boundary which cannot be crossed and we didn't want the pattern to be able to escape this boundary. Then we're just going to test the changes a bit to make sure that it's working properly, which it is. The movement is still very jittery though, so we're going to be looking into this issue next. Then we're going to fix the interpolation issue that I had introduced in the previous day. I'm going to go through this and just simplify a lot of the logic. The main issue that we had realized was that the player's position interpolation was independent of the player's scaling interpolation and the camera zoom interpolation. So we added a specific float value here to represent the player's interpolation value. It's feeling much smoother today. I also, um, one thing that helped a lot is that I am currently running on top of the uh, fallback branch, the one that I created last night. Performance is way better than um, 0.7.3. Next, we're going to work on the welcome screen, which allows players to input a username, which will be displayed on their player as they move around the world. Tyler gave some good suggestions here, like not needing the username label because we can just use the watermark text and it'll be obvious that we're asking the player for a username. Now we're going to jump into the code for the player username display. This is where we're going to show the player's username over their circle and it will move with them through the world as they move. should work we do have to like grow the the username over time otherwise it well actually maybe this will just do it for us actually i'm excited to actually see how this works let's see because we're already scaling the circle so maybe the text will just scale up automatically i don't know we'll see uh, okay that did not immediately work oh yeah did you put a did you put a username in yeah three laid okay Oh, uh -oh. oh, there you are. <laughs> it's maybe I would say a little too fast at the beginning. Yeah, like right at the start, I agree. Dude, this is like this. OK, this is like getting pretty legit now. This is like an actual game. Yeah, we for sure could deploy this on the website. This would be so cool to have like right on our like the space on DB.com website. Could. Oh man, you're bigger than I am. That's unfortunate. Dang, you're ahead of me. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Spike, oh yep. yeah. There we go, baby. 3,800. Oh my gosh, oh, it's so big, large. You're a big man. <laughs> okay, cool. So we'll do the, we'll have to do the dust screen. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you'd like to see us live, check us out at twitch.tv slash spacetimedb. We're live every Wednesday and Friday. All the source code for the Circle Game project is available on GitHub. The link for the project is down in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.